the sort of main question I have, having wandered around with you with some heavy car bollards, yeah. so they look like anyway, this morning, is what have been the biggest lessons that you've taken away from training for this this event thus far? I think a lot of people, when it comes to this record, even when I spoke to like the journalists from the, from the papers or people on social media, people think... Uh, it, it's it's you've got to be aggressive. You're gonna to have to grip, rip it, and go. And they think they probably think my training sessions from them sitting at home on the couch, seeing probably a couple of posts that on social media. It's wow, you're an animal. When if people could get a bird's eye view of what my training looks like, it's a lot of standing around. It's a lot of perfecting a tiny element of a squat and a tiny element of an RDL. It is walking at a fairly slow pace and it would probably, from an observational point, be the most boring thing on earth. But I think it massively lends itself to any big goal that you have in life. A lot of people get away from the narrative. They know the things that are going to make them get there and they look for the thing that is super sexy because it makes their ego feel better. Whereas the thing that I'm doing at the moment, you have to drop the ego and I've got to do the repetitive, non-sexy, boring shit over and over and over again in order to be successful, just to get to that point where I need to be. And I think that can probably apply to everybody's life. So it's taught me a lot of th things in this process, whether that's like with relationships, whether that's with business, whether that's with tasks of just showing up and continue to do the boring shit over and over and over again, even when I don't feel like it, because it's just continuing to push the needle in the right direction. We had the conversation before about YouTube and other shit like that. You know from your perspective, if you just stay in the game, you are going to win, because most people will probably quit at some point. But if you're going to be super resilient and keep moving forward, you're you're always going to win, because the the objective, with a, whether it be with like life or business or, or with this, it isn't to con to complete it in the shortest period of time. It's to be in the game as long as possible. And for me, the reason why I need to be in the game for as long as possible or, or relating it to the, the world record attempt is I need to not get injured. If I don't get injured, I know I'm doing it. But if I then forget my narrative of doing the same thing over and over and over again and trying to stay in the game, that's where I could lose. I think the example I've heard a lot of recently, maybe it's Hormozy, but... America lost the Vietnam War because they were trying to win. Vietnam won the Vietnam War because they were trying to survive. Lose. And that's just a fascinatingly simple perspective on essentially how a macro level that mindset is it plays out. When when the stakes are high, that's that's what the outcome was. So I think the donkey work is very valuable because one, like we discussed on a work on our walk earlier you don't have any expectations or parameters to compare yourself within, which is a very healthy place to put yourself. And that's how I found when I was training for the 24-hour squat record. It's what Jamie found when he was training for 13 hours pushing a sled. You just have the brief, you do the work, and you need to become comfortable spending time in your own head and going through that process and repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it and finding that rhythm that then translates to the end goal. But so many people aren't comfortable spending time in their own heads yeah because That's four five six hours doing the same thing without much variation without much intensity without many peaks without many troughs without being able to check your phone as you go is unconventional these days and i think that's uh that's something i've taken from this style of training in the past so yeah i very much empathize with the things you've taken from it thus far but there'll be more lessons to come won't there yeah i think with the attention spans that we have nowadays that's why it's so difficult potentially to lean into those arenas because the, the way that social media has been geared to human beings' attention is... So I said this on an, another podcast that we are literally just Flintstones operating in the fast lane of a social media world. We still don't fully understand that, and neither does the mind because it's so new. And that's why our attention spans are just dog shit and why when you tr try to do things like this, it's good because it opens you up to different ways of thought and thinking. Yeah. Exactly like you said before about part of like winning sometimes is just not losing the same with when we were alluding to happiness before a lot of times just not being unhappy i think you can probably spin a lot of things on its head and just think about the, the opposing thing that you want in order to to get to a place that you want to be even with the negative role models you can think about ways that you don't want to be like someone or you don't want their relationship in order to get something that 
you really want 